semicircular canals are three number as the name uh, shows it is semicircle so of a circle how much to cut it is a two third cut by two third so uh, semicircular canals two third of a circle and the canals carry something water canal like that the semicircular canal carries the semicircular ducts and there are three number they are the superior or the uh, anterior then uh, comes the posterior and there is also the lateral or the horizontal one and the semicircular canals are of unequal length and, but they have a uh, constant diameter of uh, ducts have a diameter of 0.8 millimeters and the uh, uh, canals sorry canals have a diameter of 0.8 and the ducts have a diameter of 0.2 canals have a 0.8 millimeter and the ducts diameter is uh, 0.2 millimeters right so this is the uh, superior one this is the posterior one and there is also the horizontal one okay these are the three number this is the uh, superior or the anterior one posterior one and the lateral or the horizontal one and each of them is opening this is a vestibule is coming here your vestibule that's already uh, taught in another class uh, previous classes and uh, each one of these semicircular canal has got an ambulated end and a non-ambulated end uh, this ambula is a dilated part that is to lodge the uh, sense organs right so here this is the ambulated end of the superior canal and the ambulated end of this is the ambulated end of the posterior one And uh, the non-ambulated end of superior and the posterior join together. They have no separate existence. They join together. And open as a crust commune. They have a common opening. This is called the crust commune. This part. Crust commune. Right? And of the lateral semicircular canal, actually uh, it is a horizontal one and it lies at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. It is not that much horizontal. It, uh, this lateral semicircular canal slightly turns downwards and backwards and forms an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal in standing posture. Right? Actually, uh, this should come like this, no? It's ambulated end. Then comes the crust commune opening. And after that, this is the uh, non-ambulated end. And up. So the uh, first comes the ambulated end of the superior semicircular canal, then comes the ambulated end of the lateral semicircular canal, then comes the uh, crust commune, then the non ambulated end of the lateral semicircular canal, 
and the ambulated end of the posterior semicircular canal. This is the order of opening into the vestibule. Actually, this uh, ambulated end of superior and the lateral uh, come close to each other so that what uh, what is there comes in, in comes in front posterior superior in the vestibule that is the utricle here comes the utricle so the superior vestibular nerve comes through the uh, uh, cribro macula cribrosa superior and it supplies the utricle along with the and uh, ambulated end of uh, superior as well as the lateral semicircular canal. That is why these all are in the almost in proximity. That is the utricle, superior and the lateral semicircular canals. So this is the order of opening. Superior and the uh, lateral semicircular canal, ambulated end, then the crest commune, then the non-ambulated end of the lateral semicircular canal and then comes the ambulated end of the posterior semicircular canal. Actually, the, uh, they, each of them has got an unequal length and the length of the superior semicircular canal is uh, around 15 to 20 millimeters and that of the lateral one is around 12 to 15 uh, millimeters and this is the uh, longest one, posterior, it is around 18 to 22 22 millimeters. So, longest one is the posterior semicircular canal. All these uh, semicircular canal lie right angles to each other and uh, if this is your face this is as your eye and this is your horizontal plane okay and this horizontal uh, semicircular canal So the semicircular canal is slopes downwards and backwards and it makes an angle of 30 degrees. From the horizontal it makes an angle of 30 degree and all the three lie at right angles to each other. And if it is, this is your head. Right here, this is your uh, superior semicircular canal. This will be a posterior canal and this is the lateral canal and so the angle will be, this will be the angle of superior canal and this is the uh, plane of the posterior canal. Okay and on this side this this is the uh, plane of superior, then posterior and the horizontal. Okay, so this is the plane of the superior one. This is the plane of the posterior canal. So, the superior semicircular canal of the left ear will be parallel to the, almost parallel to the superior, uh, posterior canal of the opposite ear. I think you got it. All the three semicircular canal right, uh, lie right angles to each other on one side and the plane of superior canal of one side will be parallel to the posterior canal of the other side. And here also, this is the superior one and this is parallel to the plane of the posterior canal on the other side. And this horizontal uh, canal lies 30 degrees uh, to the horizontal plane. Vestibular uh, receptors are 5 in number. They are 2 maculae and 3 cristae. 
This macula are present in the utricle and in the saccule. And in the utricle, it is horizontally oriented at the floor of the lateral wall. And in the saccule, it is vertically oriented on the anterior wall. Maculae, maculae. And these two are almost at right angles to each other. And in the semicircular canal, there are three crystal in the ambulated end. Crystal, ambulated end, crystal, crystal. So there are two maculae and three crystal. So together, five vestibular receptors. And the basic structure of this macula and crystal is almost the same. There is a basement membrane and this uh, sensory epithelium. And the sensory epithelium has got sensory cells and supporting cells. And the sensory cells has got cilia. And the movement of the cilia causes the vestibular motion. Or the basic physiology is, uh, is due to the movement of the cilia. And the cilia should move in a medium. This is the medium for movement of the cilia here also. And this medium should not be too hard or too fluid. If it is too hard, the cilia will, cannot move. And if it is too fluid also, too watery, then also the cilia will not move. So there is a gelatinous material, gelatinous layer over that. Here also there is a gelatinous material. So that is the basic anatomy. Now we can go to each one in detail. This macula have sensory epithelium and above the sensory epithelium there is an autoconial membrane. So this is the sensory epithelium and over that is the autoconial membrane. This autoconial membrane contains a honeycomb mesh at the lower part. Above that is a gelatinous material. Actually this Gelatinous, the lower part of the gelatinous material contains the honeycomb mesh and into that the cilia protrudes. And over the gelatinous material there is an autolith membrane or the autoconia. And this autoconia are barrel shaped and they are seen on the uppermost part of the uh, gelatinous layer. And uh, they are large crystals are there and small crystals irregularly shaped or some of them are barrel shaped and they contain more of calcium and this autolith or autoconia plays an important part in the pathophysiology of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo which we can discuss along with the BPPV and uh, um, below that is a gelatinous material and uh, the lower part of the gelatinous material is more of a honeycomb mesh type Regarding the sensory epithelium, it has got a basement membrane, supporting cells and the sensory cells. The sensory cells are the most important one. Sensory cell, supporting cells and a basement membrane. And in the basement membrane, there are the nerve fibers are passing through the basement membrane. And the sensory cells are again divided into type 1 and type 2. Flask, shape of a flask. That's a narrow neck and a wide base. Okay. Body is surrounded by a large uh, goblet shaped uh, nerve terminal. This here. This is surrounded by a large goblet shaped nerve terminal. This is a nerve terminal. And this is called the nerve callus. Callus. Right? Here. Uh, this is your type 1 cell. And the body is surrounded, uh, surrounded by a Goblet shaped. Now this is a nerve terminal. Here it comes a nerve. And it is called the nerve callus. And uh, 
There is one kinocelium and 2200 stereocelium. One large kinocelium and numerous around uh, 2200 stereocelia for this. Okay. And these are afferent. So another one is uh, another kinocelium is present. Single kinocelium and it is afferent fiber. So that is about the type. And sometimes one nerve callus can uh, encompass more than one type 1 cell. Like this. Uh, sometimes one flask, two flask, and this one nerve callus come, come, come and encircle these two, both. Like this can also happen. So it is flask sheet surrounded by a nerve callus. And there are the, there are they are the afferent fibers. And regarding the uh, type two cell, these are the type two cell. It is more of cylindrical cell, right? It is cylindrical. It's like this. It is cylindrical, right? And there is no nerve callus, and uh, there are button like nerve terminals. One single or multiple button like nerve terminals. These are the nerve ending. Sometimes there will be more than one button like nerve terminals. There is no callus. So the nerve terminals are button like. And it is mainly efferent fibers. Type 2. Here also there is uh, kinocelium and 2200 stereocelia. Surrounding the sensory cell, there are the supporting cells. And the supporting cells are covered with microvillae. And they are thought to be having a secretory function. That is a supporting cell. Here also. These are the supporting cells, that is surrounding the sensory cells, both type 1 and type 2. <coughs> so, uh, coming to the structure of the macula, there is a uh, sensory epithelium and over there there is an autoconial membrane. And the sensory epithelium has got a type 1 cell, sensory cell, that is a type 1 and also type 2 cells. And... Uh, Apart from sensory cell, they are the supporting cells and this is a basement membrane. And the autoconial membrane contains a honeycomb mesh. Over there, there is a gelatinous material. And at the top of the gelatinous material, there are the autoconia or the autolith. And in the um, crista, the difference is that there is no autoconial membrane. In this uh, crista, there is no autoconial membrane, but gelatinous material overlying the uh, sensory epithelium is called the cupula. It is called the cupula. It is only an amorphous material and it uh, occupies around two third of the uh, ampulla. It is called the cupula. Otherwise, the sensory epithelium is almost the same as this. There is a basement membrane. There are sensory cell type 1 and type 2. And there are also supporting cells. And this uh, type 1 and type 2 cell have the same structure as that of the macula. But only difference is that there is no autoconia here. But there is a cupula. Autoconia ki pagaram. Idhan cupula. It is also gelatinous also. Okay.